Hey, y'all. Good morning. <laughs> I just realized. Um, it's hard to tell one video from the other because, hello, she still got on the sweater, the black t-shirt, and the hat with her hair and braids. It's all redone. It's Yeah, it's the same old sweater. Um, it turned out to be my a, a good sleep sweater because it's warmer, and uh, we've had a couple of uh, really cold nights. Um, okay, one really cold night last night. It got down in the 30s. I've actually, it's 9.30. I still got my little heater going. Oh, there's a little bird. He just flew up to my window. No, you can't come in. Sorry. No bird seeding here. So, um, so a few things. Um, one, uh, was when I was talking about the shepherd the other day. And I don't remember uh, who who commented about the breaking the legs on the little lambs or the actually it's a sheep. Um, it wouldn't be a little baby. You're still training the babies. This is for the sheep that just won't stay in the pasture where you want them. And they said, "Well, that sounds like you're uh, trying to conform to the other sheep." And I was like, and I kept thinking about it and pondering it, and I thought, no. It's not about being like the other sheep. It's about doing what the shepherd wants you to do and being where the shepherd wants you to be. And that's what we're doing. We're supposed to conform to the image of Yeshua. And if you just won't listen, sometimes you get your legs broke. And some of you knew, and y'all can relate. <laughs> And that's why I'm here, to encourage you. Um, the other thing, I was reading those. I've, I've written a couple of journal entries. The ones I decided I just haven't. I just decided to keep it in my journal. And maybe it'll come out in the, if I ever get that book put together. Um, oh, man. I derailed. Squirrel. Um, what about those entries? It's about me being who I was and trying to find or fix and do things on my own. Um, everything from, you know, um, I, I tend to, I was binging on a lot of things. Netflix, <laughs> food. Um, I was just trying to escape all of what I saw going on around me. Now, I watched a video this morning that is basically just, um, I think he's he's one of the, some kind of watchman, but he just puts together all the news clips and stuff, and I put it on, and I'm doing things like brushing my teeth and fixing my hair. Believe it or not, I do fix my hair. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'm listening to it, and oh, some of it, it, it's just, it's hard to bear, and, and, and a lot of it's hard to understand, and I know that there's, you know, all these wars and people fighting, and then you see um, the refugees, people living in tents, sort of, I mean, horrible, horrible places, and it always strikes me that they're always saying they, 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 they need to help us. They need to give us money to buy food. They need to, and, and it's like thousands of people depending on a government that obviously the reason they're there is because of their government. Why would they look to their government for help? It, I, I, I just, I, you know, it's, it kind of stuns me. Um, and then, speaking of governments, they keep saying, oh, it's a flu epidemic. Go get a flu shot. It probably won't work, but we want you to be injected with these whatever's in there. <laughs> I, really? I'm like, you know, to me, what I would say, and I will say, it's the same thing with the snow. Don't go out there. If your baby is sick, 
why are you sending your baby to school to infect other people? Is it really? And if you're sick, why are you going to work? And now they're like, oh, this is news. News flash. The cooties get spread just in the air. Well, duh. That's news? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. You crazy people. If you're sick, stay home. I'm sorry. There ain't no money. There ain't. Is it really worth risking your life? At this point, that's what you're doing. Risking your life so you can go to work with the flu. And then give it to everybody else. And then they don't understand why it's such a massive flu epidemic. Oh, I understand. You got to buy food. You got to pay rent, house payment, car payments, get your hair done, your nails, buy clothes, all that stuff that Walmart's got. Which brings me to, <laughs> I heard a really good piece of advice. It really was kind of funny. I was listening to the, uh, the RTR. Some of the video, I mean, there's just everybody's got videos coming out because that's how a lot of people make their money is by having YouTube channels. And and it's kind of a passive income. You're not going to make a, a hoard of money that way. But and what, I guess if you get 30,000 followers, you might um, make a pretty good living at it. And uh, there are those few. But anyway, um, Bob Wells, and he was, um, you know, I've had a, a I've had a lot of people say it to me, too. Oh, I wish I could do that, but I've got so much stuff, and I've got this big house, and a, or I've got an apartment, and, and I just don't know how to do that. And he said the funniest thing. He was like, well, here, if you really think you might want to do it someday, then start practicing. And he said, move into your bedroom. Get rid of everything. Move into your bedroom. Don't don't flip on the switch for lights. Get you some solar lanterns or whatever, flashlights. See what you can do. See how little you can live with. And and number one, stop buying stuff. Because that's the big thing. Everybody's like, I don't know how to get rid of all my stuff. Well, you know, you have to stop buying it. That's 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 number one. <laughs> Don't buy more stuff. It's so funny. A lot of times I'm like, I'll be out and I'm like, oh, I could go in there and see. I, no. Oh, and I heard this one on a video today. It's um, it's a place in California called Slap City. And they have a, um, where did I write it? Oh, there it is. Um, there was a man, it took him 20 some years and he built this place. They call it Salvation Mountain. And it's a beautiful place. He just wanted everybody to know about the love of God. So that's how it started. And 20-some years, the man was building on the thing. And the girl who, um, he passed away. And um, the girl who is kind of overseeing it, responsible for it, um, she said there's a, there's a, uh, there's a, what, do, what would you call it, a motto. And it is, won't what you need and don't need what you want pretty deep huh and so that kind of brought me here um you know i still have a lot of i have a lot of little stuff because i've always loved little stuff um and every now and then i've got a whole bin of what i call bric-a-brac and it's little things that were given to me over the years lots of years, 30, at least 30 years, um, and every now and then I'll pull them out and look at them and remember the people that gave them to me and the circumstance, and which brings me to, if you don't love it and it doesn't bring back good memories, why are you keeping it? You don't really need it, do you? Because it's not really anything good, so, um, a simple life. There's there's people out there living way, way more simply than me. They're living in a car. And, you know, with all the stuff that's going on in the economy, and, and that's what I see. Everybody's struggling to maintain and hold on to all this stuff 
to the point where they have to get out on icy roads down in the south, in Atlanta, South Carolina. I'm like, bless their hearts. I'm like, um, even when I was working, I'm like, it's not worth me risking my life. <laughs> I'll do without something, okay? Um, but anyway, and, and the same thing with the flu. And that's, we just now talk about conforming. Gotta have, gotta have, gotta have. Well, turns out, no, you don't. No, you don't. There's a lot of stuff you don't gotta have to live. And no, I'm not trying to convince you to live my lifestyle. But if it appeals to you and you feel burdened by all that stuff that you have to take care of, just the dusting alone will make you nuts. <laughs> And I think you got a big house, you got to keep the roof up, you got to have it painted. And, you know, once you get to a certain age, now one thing I do miss, I didn't really have a gathering place like I used to. Um, here would be a little different because we, you know, the weather's good enough, we could gather outside. And of course, when you're on the East Coast, you know, those those times during the summer and Got to fight the bugs, but you know you can have things outside and and um, yeah, um, there are ways of doing it, and um, it's I'm kind of regrouping. I'm I'm doing two things. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, and I know that, and just surviving because Yeshua is coming back because he promised he would. And he said when he left that he was going to go make a place for me. So, so this place is just temporary shelter. This this just a place to hold up till he gets here. Um, and golly, I'm 60. Tops, I might have 20 years. That'd be really pushing it. Um, but you figure another, that's nothing. Of course, it's a lot when you're only 30. When you're 30 and you're thinking about 60, that's like so far away, you can't even imagine. But um, it's just amazing what you don't really have to have to live a happy life. Now, um, and apparently what I need are three good Bibles. <laughs> I'm looking at two of them right now so that I can compare scriptures. And this website that I listed yesterday had a really good way of studying the Word. And I wanted to be able to share it and interact with other people. So um, I've gotten that outlet, too. So I could just kind of give it out here. Um, listening to Chuck Missler, there was a whole lot of talking and, and trying to really focus in on what he's saying. And I got some really good ideas. And one of those was... That if you read a scripture and you really don't get it, I think that, yeah, I'm pretty sure this was Chuck Missler. You really don't. It's like, what does that mean? Because that happened to me the other day. And I wrote in my journal and then I reread it and I was like, really? So he said, take the, a specific journal and you write in that journal the scripture that you don't understand. Now, for me, I also wrote all the things I don't understand about it and the questions I have. And he said, then you just keep, you ask, you ask for the Father to reveal to you what that really means. And you know, it's a living, breathing document. So what it means to me, it might not mean that to you. And the revelation to me will be for me. And it'll be for me to conform to the image of Yeshua. Or it could be something I need to share with you to help you along the path too. Isn't it cool how that works? I'm so happy to be here. It's a good day. It's a good day. And even, and even though. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just happy to have found so many good teachers and, 
And honestly, I'm just going to say it out loud. Alan, Alan is my favorite. I mean, he was, uh, it's just, there's something, and something is probably the Ruach, that led me there and has just, um, it fills me. It fills me. Um, not what he says, what the Spirit says while he's talking. And a, and a greater understanding. And I'm like, this is just, um, who said that? Somebody said that. See, I listen to a number of people. Um, it's kind of like boot camp. We're in boot camp. We're learning how to be. We're learning how to be there. And um, I, I, I just want to learn the lessons that he wants me to learn. And I feel like Time is so short, and I've wasted a lot of it. There's a lot of regret. But there's also looking back, knowing that most of the time I was, I was really trying to do the right thing. And I still am. But a lot of the, the striving to make myself better, I don't, he just... It just happened over the last year. Those There were desires that I had. One was for a husband. <laughs> and all the reasons I wanted a husband. And that's just um, all of the reasons I wanted. I have, I have found those, those desires fulfilled in a relationship with him. It's amazing. Amazing to me. I love that. I love that. So, anyway, that's, um, wow, that's a lot of rambling for a Sunday morning. And uh, I just feel hopeful. And that's, I hope you do too. And, and if you're not feeling hopeful today, no, it's coming. It'll be all right. Do today. Do today what you're led to do to make headway down the path. It's a narrow path, and it's hard, but it does make you stronger. <sighs> it's nice to be, um, I wouldn't say I'm on the mountaintop. I'm kind of at a plateau, content to be where I am and still making headway. It just is like I needed I needed a breath. I needed a place where it wasn't it wasn't quite that hard. And what's funny is people <laughs> look at me and go, It's not that hard. Are you kidding? The woman doesn't have running water. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. I needed my lungs cleared. I needed a good laugh. And if I'm gonna laugh at anything, I have to laugh at me. Yeah, it looks crazy. Um, but it doesn't feel crazy. It feels right. And that, that's an awesome, awesome moment in, in my history. So I hope y'all are blessed today. And, um, I hope something I've said is encouraging. Please don't take offense at anything. Um, you know, iron sharpens iron. And so whenever, and, and, so a lot of times, th that's what's happening for both of us. So thank you. Thank you for being bold and brave and leaving me awesome comments and suggestions. And don't be offended if I get distracted and don't take them. Um, wonky hair. So, um, sorry, squirrel. I love y'all. I really do. Thank you so much for all of your 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 feedback, your emails, and your excitement, and <sighs> have a blessed day. Love you. Love y'all. <laughs>